Okay, this last video in section 5.7, uh, we're gonna look at um, one average value and then two, um, kind of an application or critical thinking question. Uh, so average value of this function from zero to two, we haven't done an average value for a little bit, so let's do one now. So first you gotta remember the formula. So one over b minus a times the integral from a to b of your function. Um, So we can fill everything in. So on the outside, that would be a half going from zero to two of secant pi x over six dx. So this is we're gonna require a u substitution. So u would equal pi x over six and the du would be pi over six dx. I also have some bounds, so let's go ahead and switch those out. So when x is zero, u is zero, and when x is two, u is pi over three. So we're gonna do a couple of things before we just start to integrate it. Uh, one, I need a pi over six dx, so I need a pi over six inside and a six over pi on the outside. So a half times six over pi, that's three over pi, times the integral, and now I can switch everything into terms of u. <clears throat> so the bounds are now gonna go from zero to pi over three And then on the inside, I'll have secant of u du. So integrate <clears throat> ln absolute value of secant u plus tangent u going from zero to pi over three. So let's leave this three over pi on the outside and we're gonna plug in the pi over three So secant of pi over three, that is two, and tangent of pi over three, that is a root three. And then minus, now plug in the zero. Secant of zero is one, tangent of zero is zero. So now you can simplify it down three over pi on the outside. Uh, on the inside, two plus root three, that's a positive. So I can get rid of the absolute value bars. They're no longer necessary. And ln of one, that's just zero, so that gets knocked out. And there's your solution. So, you know, these average values of the mean value theorem for integrals, they can come back into any type of integral. You have the skills and techniques necessary to evaluate them. So just be aware of that. Okay, let's look at this last example. The figure above shows the graph of f prime, the derivative of a twice differentiable function f on the closed interval from one to nine. Okay, this is the graph of the derivative. Not f. This is the derivative graph, not the graph of f. I don't know what f looks like. They did not draw that. Don't try to guess. You don't have enough information to do it. Okay. So the areas of the regions between the graph of the derivative and the x-axis are labeled in the figure. So from one to three, that area is eight. Three to six, that area is 11. And six to nine, that area is 12. And the function f is defined for all real numbers, so nothing is undefined, and satisfies f of nine is equal to 13. So part a, where does f have a relative max? Well, it has a relative max when the derivative itself switches from positive to negative or from above the x-axis to below. So that's gonna occur right 
or there. That's where it's switching from above to below. So x is equal to 3. And then your justification or reasoning, since f prime switches, from positive to negative. All right, part B, where does F have an absolute maximum? So not a relative, but an absolute. So to test for absolute extrema, you have to test your critical numbers uh, and then also test your um, endpoints into the original function. Now, since it wants an absolute max, we don't need to worry about you know any other critical numbers uh, like a relative min because a relative min is never going to give you an absolute max. So the only critical number I have to use is the 3. But I also have to plug in the 1 and plug in the 9 because those are the endpoints of the interval. And then I just have to figure out, okay, well, once I plug them in, which one is the biggest? Well, I don't have a function. I have a derivative, but I don't have a function f. But if I start with a derivative, if I integrate it, that would give me the function. So I'm going to integrate f prime because that would give me f, but I don't have a function for the for uh, the derivative. So the only other option I can do is to make this a definite integral. And I'm going to integrate it from 3 to 9. And what this is going to do, it's going to test the three. So I'm going to set up three different integrals and, and test them. Okay, so if I integrate the derivative, I get the function going from three to nine. So let's look at this right here. I set up a definite integral, and a definite integral represents the area under the curve, right? So from three to nine, I have this region and this region, the 11 and the 12. Well, since the 11 is below the x, it's gonna make a negative and the 12 will end up being positive. Now on the right side, I need to plug in the nine And plug in the 3. Okay, back on the left side, negative 11 plus 12, that's normally 1. Now, f of 9, they gave that to me. That's why I went to the 9, because I know f of 9 is 13. I don't know f of 3, but that's okay, because now I can solve for it. Now I just do the algebra. So f of 3 is going to actually equal 12. Okay, so now we're going to test the endpoint of 1. So I'm going to integrate from 1 to 9 of the same thing. I'm going to integrate with that derivative. Because again, if I integrate f prime, that's going to give me f. Going from 1 to 9. So plug in the bounds. f of 9 again is 13. f of 1 I don't know. Back on the left side, just look at the areas under the curves. So I'm going from 1 to 9, so all the whole way. So I have an 8, a negative 11, and a 12. So if I combine all of that, I get 9. And then if I solve for this f of 1, I end up with 4. <clears throat> So I came out with f of 3 is 12, f of 1 is 4, and I know f of 9 is 13. And out of those answers, the 12, 4, and the 13, which one is the biggest? The f of 9. And that is your absolute max. Okay. So that will do it for this section. Um, please let me know if you have any questions. Go ahead and try the homework problems. Um, keep reviewing. Going over the things from the rest of the chapter. And we have one more chapter to go. So, yeah, let's get that one done.